Hi everyone, hope you're ready. I'm quite nervous, so bear with me. Okay, so I want to share with you a little bit uh, today of my testimony. Um, this is go back when I, I was in Argentina. And there is a passage that always spoke to me, and it's in Luke 16.10. And I just read it quickly. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And this scripture um, was with me as I was going through difficult time in my life, um, as I was going through heartbreaking. Um, I'll give you a little bit of the background. So my mom was a widow with four young children. So we lost our dad when, when we were really little. Although this, she was a widow and with four young kids, she never stopped of serving God. She never stopped and sit back, sit back and say, okay, I'm done. So this really stayed with me from a very young age. When I was 16, uh, my mom passed away. In one year, she, she passed away, she got ill and she died. And I was sent to this remote place in Argentina, up, up north, very, yeah, very remote, where I was sent to live with my auntie and my uncle. So they take care of me. Well, they had another six children, and also they have, um, they just started a, a church planting in there. So it was a tough time uh, coming to a place like that. Uh, over there, uh, it was poor, remote place, deprived. Um, the location was terrible. Um, you could go outside um, and see the children anywhere, everywhere on the street, uh, completely begging um, for food, for love, for care, fatherless. Um, so God, I knew in that moment, although I was a 16 years old teenager, uh, full of pain, sad, um, experiencing grief, emptiness. I knew, I knew not only because of my mom's faith, but because what he started with us, I knew that he was taking me to this place to make a difference. However, I didn't feel like that in the beginning. Um, I didn't feel like I could give absolutely anything. I could not give nothing from pain. I, um, I could give nothing from anything. I was absolutely empty. But that's where this title came um, into my mind. And it says, don't do nothing just because you can't do everything. This, this is funny, but when you are taken from a place where I had my siblings, although I didn't have my parents, I had, I was secure, I knew that place. But when you are taken out from that place of security, you become and wonder, what am I doing here? What could I ever give to anybody? Um, little by little, I was drawn to the love, to the love of this place, these children, these people that they didn't have absolutely nothing. They didn't have faith. They didn't have food. They were living in a mad house. So very, very poor place. We used to walk miles away um, to, to bring not only the word of God, but to bring to someone that was 
starving and hungry for a very long time, these children. We used to do breakfast, a Sunday school breakfast. So we would walk miles away, we would carry everything with us, um, we would have hot milk, we would have bread just, just baked. And we used to give these children what we had, this piece of bread. But also, I could remember after these children, they were fed, we were singing, dancing, we teaching them the word of God, the gospel, and how um, loved they, they are, they were. Um, but with that, a full belly, you could have more attention. So that's why we did that beforehand. We feed them, then we gave the, the word of God. I could say I never, in the beginning, I thought I will never love this place. In the beginning, I thought, what, I, what am I doing in here? I can't give nothing. But seeing uh, and and. and and doing what I could do, cutting the hairs, washing the faces, taking uh, the headlights from, from the, the hair. That was more than just not doing nothing and sit back and, and wait for maybe someone else come and do it. But that's the way I could say how my healing came how God used me in that situation, just being a simple um, giver of love, simple giver of food. God started healing my heart. Although I had a time where I was up and down, he showed me that he had so much more to, for me to give. And this leads me to these three points that I want to uh, put across. So in that stage, uh, we wonder. We wonder in many seasons in our life if we are capable of serving or even worthy of any task um, that they've been given to us. And I could say I felt definitely in a wonder saying, of course, I can't do this. I can't do it on my own. What are I going to give? But it was different because when God comes in, he gives you that. He gives you the power. He gives you that, uh, um, that way that you could give out of nothing and he returned it back to you. Was the blessing, was the smiles, was the hugs and see you next Sunday, that will keep me going. We are tempted. So we are tempted to hold back. So I could easily say, okay, no, that is out of my, um, uh, out of what I could do, and we hold back. We think that someone else will do it, or we think, oh, actually, I won't have the time right now, so I better, I better leave it. We get tempted to say, no, I'm holding back. We thinking and believing that we will never be good enough to please God. And this came a lot, a lot of time to my mind. I wasn't good enough. I wasn't qualified to do anything, to give anything. But God said no. Out of the pain, out of the grief, he was doing and healing and, and making that deep, deep hospitality heart, hospitable heart in me. We question. We question whether it's the right step to take. A lot of times, I still do it now, I question, is this the right step? Is this the right thing I should be doing right now? And we think, is this a waste of time? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make a difference. Or even, have I got the right qualification? 
So God has equipped you, I can say to you. Jesus doesn't point at a lack of experience. He doesn't care about the opinion of others. He sees an effort and a heart. So what is the Lord is looking for? So my opinion, a humble God is more likely to be looking for a willing heart, a heart um, that could say, yes, okay, I don't know how to do it. I haven't got much to give, but I will do it. I will go the extra mile. I will be the gap filler, a, hosp a hospitable hand. And if you imagine and think, he will whisper uh, words like this. Beloved, do what you can. Take the step, offer the service, give the idea, set the goal, use those talents, do what you can do. Move forward with small things, one step at a time. And I want to just briefly read from 1 Corinthians 12, verse 5, which it says, There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. Later on, Paul says, Sorry. He talks about the body, the body with many parts. And he goes and explains and says, um, it's verse 12. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. And then in, in verse 20, say, yes, there are many parts, but only one body. So I can say to you, a lot of times I could, I could think, okay, my gift, I don't know if it's good enough. Um, I don't know if that's gonna make a difference. I could think also, okay, I'm, I am part of a body, but that part, that part of the body is more important than my part of the body. And this is not true. I mean, I, I battle, I wrestle in my mind constantly. <laughs> but I just want to say you, we all got a gift of God. For me, back then was that just to be a helping hand, just to uh, go to someone and give a card or just pray for them. That was my gift. And the part of the body, we all different. We, we have two hands, two legs, but we also have ears and eyes and nose, and we all are part of the same body. We all different, but we need every single part of the body to work together for the kingdom of God. So my conclusion, <laughs> no matter how, you feel or what you have been through you have what it takes you need to be the yes person that says yes to jesus we are on this together we if we have the heart that says yes lord yes heavenly father you have taken me through this with a purpose I still don't know why it happens, how it happens, but I know that God was with me every step of the way, and He's still now. So I want to give you an example also, the power of the invite, the power of invite. So I could easily say, okay, I'm going to do it all, but this it didn't work that way. We have to, to be a group. We have to, to be a body. We needed many people 
to care for the need of others. So two Sundays ago, I had my friend um, and I saw her briefly coming in. And later on, we spoke together and she said to me, she said, Sammy, you know what? I was prepared just to come in from the back door and out to the back door. I just wanted to come and enjoy the service. But later on when she was going out, a few of us spotted her and, and I said, hey, how are you doing? How has it been all this year away uh, really from the church, from the circumstances that we still kind of in? And she said, you know what, Sammy? She said, I was prepared to come in and out. But when I spoke to her, I felt, you know, the Holy Spirit, when it tells you, speak to her. Ask her if she would like to join you in the hospitality team. And as I said, I said, you know, you have so much to give. Don't think your time is up. Don't think, okay, now I retire. From different circumstances, she wasn't able to serve in the church, although she did before. And she said to me, you know what, Sammy? I'm going to do it. Yes, I'm going to try. I'm going to just put me once a month in the coffee bar rota and see how I'm getting along. And then later on, she texted me and said, you know what, Sammy? Just put me a few more, a few more weeks because I want to serve. I want to, I want to do it. I want to be part of this. And that shows me how we all can have that hospitable hand. Doesn't matter where we do it, if it's in the coffee bar, the blue army, wherever we are. God wants us to use that hospitable heart, that hand that can say, come join me, come, you can do it, you got what it takes, you got gifts, you are part of the body. So my question for you today is, what are one or two things to small steps the Holy Spirit is calling you to do today? Okay, thank you.